Abby, what's the best way for people to decide how to divide household chores? Well, ideally, this is something that you've been talking about from early on in your relationship. Uh, if you haven't, definitely people <laughs> should start as soon as possible. Uh, we have a list in our book of all of the different chores and tasks involved in running a household that you can use and exercises of how to have these conversations. Uh, what's important is to make a plan of how you might divide the list and then um, consider if that is aligned with the type of relationship that you're seeking. If you want to have an equitable partnership, but one person is doing the lion's share of the chores, um, that might not feel exactly right. So making a plan that, that feels good to both of you and then putting the plan into practice and seeing if it um, feels fair, if you're satisfied with the way it's working out, if your partner is satisfied. It may not feel right. In fact, it rarely feels right on the first go round. And even if it does, circumstances change. And it's one of the things that we think is really important to revisit frequently in the course of a long-term relationship. And of course, it's complicated because it's not only which chores uh, are divided um, and how they're divided, but also uh, when the chore gets done and how it gets done and is it done to your satisfaction. <laughs> and uh, th This is really a complicated set of issues. Um, but it doesn't have to be 50-50 to be fair. Uh, as long as the two people think it's fair, that's what counts. Uh, so don't necessarily uh, aim for 50-50. And remember that some chores, perhaps in your family, don't have to be done at all. Maybe you're OK with a messier house than other people like. Um, and maybe some of the chores can be outsourced, and neither one of you does it. So I think um, all those things are possible as long as everybody is satisfied with the, with the division. And if they're not, then more discussion is in order. And then once kids enter the picture, um, there are a whole host of other tasks to, to divide up. And one thing that happens frequently, we see a fair amount, is that in a heterosexual relationship, often the mom um, feels that she has to leave the workforce because she can't find available, affordable, high-quality childcare. And it's not surprising, there is a childcare crisis in many places, uh, but we think that before anyone makes a decision to leave the workforce, that they think creatively about the choices available to them. And that could mean moving to a place where um, it could be closer to family and families available to help out with childcare. It could be um, sharing a care provider with another family, um, really checking in with others and getting creative can be helpful before any decisions are made. And if someone is going to leave the workforce to spend full time caring for their kids, um, they really need to think about how they're going to get back in. Uh, and so they need to maintain their contacts while they're out of the workforce. Perhaps they need to do some volunteer work, not necessarily on day one, but eventually. Um, and just keep in mind uh, the question of how to get back in. Mm -hmm.